Good morning, church. So glad you're here. And guess what? It's Easter. That's right. We're, we're going to start with some worship this morning. Lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Let's sing. He's rescued you from our sin. Even in the rain, it's a glorious day. Amen. So if you haven't already, go ahead and find a seat. Let's start singing. Buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing, but So, so glad you're here. Why don't you take a second now? Go ahead and shake hands with the people that are around you.
I'll get up here. I know, it's super foggy. All right, hey everybody, how's it going? Who's happy to be here today? All right, if you're happy to be here today, go on and have your seat so we can do the announcements. Everyone sitting down? All right, perfect. All right, welcome everybody. We are so glad you are here. Just some quick housekeeping rules just as we get started. Uh, the restrooms are in the back. The men's is on this side. The women's is on this side. We have a family room over here as well. And if you do need to exit the church sometime during the service, all we ask is you do it out the back and not these side doors. Ashley, if it's your first time, what do you do? <gasps> if it's your first time and you are a guest here today. <laughs> By the way, good morning, happy Easter. <laughs> okay, I absolutely love to do this and I didn't prepare Chris, but I just love this so much. It's my favorite thing and it's the thing that we really only get to do today. So I'm gonna say he is risen and I would love if you could follow up with a super strong he is risen indeed. Can we try that? Yeah, he is risen. Yeah. Woohoo! Happy good. Easter! It's I'm glad really you did good. that. Yeah. Good. Well, if you are a guest here today, we are so glad that you're joining us. Um, there are a couple things that you can do. First of all, you can text hello to 562-568-7575, and you'll get a bunch of great information there. You can also, there's a QR code on your notes that you can scan if you want to get more information that way. And I believe we still have welcome cards too, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, so you can grab a welcome card. They're in the, um, the pocket in front of you, unless you're in the front row, then they're behind you. You can grab one of those welcome cards and fill it out and afterwards you can take it out to the gazebo so that you can give it to us and we'll give you a free gift. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So Who wants a free gift? pretty great. No one wants a free gift? <laughs> All right. So we have some announcements for you, some things that are going on and we want to just let you know about a few of them. One of them is that we have um, Calvary Kids Bible Buddies. So next Sunday, come back, and if you have a, a child that's up until sixth grade, there's going to be a table on the patio that you can go to, and you can sign up, and your child will get a stuffy and a Bible reading plan so that they can read the Bible reading plan to their stuffy so they have a Bible buddy. Isn't that fun? So that's a really great thing our children's ministry is doing, so you can find out more information about that by going um, out to the patio next week. Yes. Yes. And uh, starting every Wednesday in April, we are having Wednesday University. So what is Wednesday University? So it's Kid U, Youth U, and then now we're going to have Grow U for the adults. So the Kid U will be in the Calvary Kids Room. Uh, the Youth U, what are, you, what are you guys going over? We're actually going through, I don't know if you've heard, um, there's this wonderful woman, her name is Hosanna Wong, and she does spoken word. And oh, so nice. she does, has a brand new one about Jesus. So we're going to be breaking down Jesus, who he is, and what he is in our lives by going through that spoken word poetry. That sounds fantastic. It is, isn't it? For the, and that's going to be in the youth room. Yes. And for the adults, we're going to be going over Grow You, and that's going to be parenting. So parenting's tough, right? If you're a parent, raise your hand. If you're a parent and you think it's kind of tough, raise your hand. All right, so all of you, meet us in the fireside next week at uh, 6 o'clock, and we're just going to talk about it. It's just going to be kind of a conversation going on about uh, the struggles of parenting and how we can get better at it in uh, this time. Absolutely. We also have, oh, I think we have Oh, it's my turn. You're going to talk yes. to us about, yeah. So my turn. Starting Point is next week. So if you're new to Calvary, it's your first time here, uh, you can come to Starting Point. Uh, it's at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's in Pastor Ken's office. Uh, this is basically where you come to learn about Jesus and you come to learn about Calvary and it's nine o'clock next Sunday So if it's your first time here, that's something you want to join next week And then still my turn men's retreat the men's retreat is happening. We're gonna be building some anchors That's gonna be fun. It's April 19th through the 21st. The cost is $225 that includes food That's a good price for including food and it is a good spread of food that's out there. I've heard it's very delicious. So if you want more information about that, you can go online and register, or you can see Michael Cross. He's right there. Let's give Michael Cross a round of applause again. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. And uh, he could give you more information on that. And I have something really exciting to share with you. For our youth students, this is our 7th through 12th graders. We have our spring formal coming up. This is our annual spring formal. Yeah, those that have been, they know. They know how wonderful it is. 
Um, this is our annual spring formal. It's really wonderful. I can tell you all the places that we're going if you want to come and talk to me later because it's a surprise for our students. But it's a six-hour event. We go to dinner. We do an activity. We do a dessert. It's so much fun. But that is coming up on April 20th. Registration is going to be opening this week. So if you have a 7th through 12th grader, make sure to sign them up so that they can have a really great time connecting with other youth students, having fun together, and glorifying God. It's going to be really great. It's going to be great. Yeah. Now, uh, what else do we have? We also have, coming up on April 27th, we have the Women's Ministry Auction. There they are. I know, you're excited about this. It's a wonderful time. We get to come and hang out together, be a little competitive, um, try and get some really great stuff. But um, the money goes to help out with Christmas missions. It's a really great thing. I think sponsorships for the Women's Retreat, too. But it's a really great opportunity. There's breakfast. There's... Um, a time to go on a hunt. You get to find all these really great things, and it's a silent auction. So if you want to be there, make sure you buy your tickets. They're going to be selling tickets today in the Family Center. Yes. So you can go over there and get your tickets, uh, but don't miss out on that. It's a really fun event. Yes, we said a lot of stuff. Maybe you were listening, maybe you weren't, but if you weren't listening, there is a flyer in the seat in front of you. It says what's happening at Calvary in the month of April. You could also look at that. It has a lot of details. Uh, if we could have the ushers come forward as we get ready to give to God. And again, if you're new here, you can come see us at the welcome table in the Family Center. Don't forget, after service, we have the Easter egg hunt. We'll have more information on that. Also, if you have a little one here and you want to take them to the children's ministry, uh, you can just meet me in the back and I will walk you over there after I get done praying. Sounds good? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this wonderful day. We get to celebrate uh, what you did all those years ago by coming back. Uh, to life, resurrecting, and defeating our greatest enemies, death, sin, and Satan, Lord, and giving us the freedom to have a relationship with you. We ask that during this time of giving that we would just remember all of that, Lord, and give uh, as generously as our hearts desires. We thank you so much, and we ask that your spirit be filled in this place today. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name.
we lift you up. We praise you this morning, God. And we celebrate today that death could not hold you. That you tore the veil between us and restored our relationship with you on the cross. So as the angels are celebrating today and singing, holy, holy, holy is the lamb that was slain, we declare with them that you are holy. You are holy. You are holy. God, we praise you this morning. We lift you up. We praise your powerful name this morning. Amen. Amen, church. You give us a seat. You guys ready? Man, look around you. Look at how many people are in here. This is awesome, right? Yes. And, and you, you braved the rain. Like you made it. Like you made it. That's awesome. So uh, it, it, it's, what a great, you guys sound great too. So uh, this, is, this is great. What a, what a great day to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, hopefully uh, afterwards we can go everything's going to be inside afterwards in the family center we're gonna have a lot of fun with that but we want to jump into the scripture this morning and so uh, we're going to do this so today there's no better day than today that represents uh, a new start a, a fresh start uh, to an experience kind of a whole new life there's no better day than today like Easter Sunday resurrection day there's really no better day in the year and we celebrate it all year long you know, we, we celebrate the resurrection. We, we live in Christ. So it's not like, oh, it's the only day we celebrate the resurrection. But today is like that day where we say, hey, there's no better day than uh, this day to say, hey, listen, 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus hung on a cross and he was put in the grave. And on the third day, what happened? He rose from the grave, right? He's alive today. So we, we, he was dead. Now, he was really dead. He was, de- he was really dead, and then he, he came to life. He is alive today. Do you believe that this morning, that he's alive? Come on, is he really alive today? Yeah, so he's really alive. So uh, you know what that means for me? That means that, that I was dead in sin, and now I'm alive in Christ. I don't know if that's your testimony, but I was dead. This guy was dead, and now I'm alive. I was, I was dead in sin, now I'm alive in Christ, and you... If you have Christ in your life, you have been raised from the dead to live a new life in Jesus Christ. That's, the, that's why today is so important. You were dead and now you're alive. Now some of you, some of you are still walking dead. Look around. Don't point at them, just so you know, okay. Walking dead, all right. So some of you are still walking dead, but you're here today and you're like, oh, okay, I'll go to church with you, all right. So how many of you have not been here since last Easter? Don't raise your hand, I'm just kidding. So. But I'm just thinking, man, today, today is the day, today is the day, today is the, there's no better day for us to celebrate what was dead is alive. If, 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 if you're here today and you're thinking, man, there's some deadness in my life, you're here today because God wants to get rid of that deadness and make you fully alive. You see, Jesus did not come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. So here's what I want you to know. You are here today, and, and, and I, someone said this about a, about a church, and I thought, man, this, I love this. Welcome to a place where we be- believe that everyone is welcome, no one's perfect, and anything can happen. Don't you love that? Everyone's welcome, no one's perfect, not even you, okay, not even the person next to you, no one's perfect, and anything can happen. So today's a new day, new start. So we're going to start a new thing called Romans. We're going to go through Romans from start to finish. Now, you're like, well, I thought we were going to talk about the resurrection today. We are, but we're going to start in Romans. So typically what happens uh, during this Easter season is like we did this week, you know, we've been talking about the cross, and we kind of this week, we came Thursday night, we had communion, we're talking about that Last Supper, and then Friday night, it was Good Friday, and then today we get up and say, okay, end of the story, he's alive, okay? So today, it's not the end of the story. It's the beginning of the story. It's the beginning of God still working in your life. So 
um, it, it's the, the story of you becoming alive in Christ and moving forward. So, Romans. We're going to spend the next about 40 weeks in Romans. How many of you love that right now? You're like, oh, that's Woo! awesome. That's awesome. How many of you think that's not enough time? <laughs> yeah, you who are spiritual. How many of you are thinking, man, six weeks, I'm out of here, okay? So, uh, yeah, so Romans, start to finish. We're going to do the whole thing. And uh, why Romans, though? Why Romans? Because Romans, basically, the entire Bible is wrapped into Romans. And I love what Warren Wiersbe said. He said that uh, if you understand Romans, you will have the key to understanding the rest of the Bible. Better yet, you will have the secret of a success of successful Christian living. So Romans is key. It's like the Magna Carta of, of the Bible. So, we, so we're going to go through this, and, and we're going we're gonna to rip it apart, okay? Now, I got a lot to cover today, so... If you want to really get into this, you're going to have to join with a life group and use that study guide that you got in those notes today and start working through that and really dig into it, lean into it. God, what you, how are you working in my life from start to finish? And we're going to talk about what that means. So we're going to cover the first chapter, the first 17 verses, okay? So I'm going to read the first 17 verses, and then I'm going to give you what I call five powerful tools for a fresh start with God. Anyone feel like you need a fresh start today? Yeah. I, do, I, feel, I feel like I need it every day. So here, here we go. Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 1. It says, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through the prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him and bring glory to his name. And you are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you all who are in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. It goes on in verse 8. It says, let me say... First, that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because of your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night I bring you and your needs in prayer to God whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about his son. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. For I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to work uh, among you and see spiritual fruit just as I have seen among other Gentiles. For I have a great sense of obligation to the people in both the civilized world and the rest of the world, to the educated and the uneducated alike. So I'm eager to come to you in Rome, too, to preach the good news. And here's the, kind of the key verses of the uh, entire letter of Romans. But it says, For I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how, to, how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Now let me, let me unpack this, this 17 verses in five key thoughts, okay? And those are the, the five key thoughts to so these five basic uh, powerful tools. So we're thinking about the, the word power 
and uh, powerful tools to give you and I a fresh start today. Now, it's, it's today, Resurrection Day for today. So some of you need a fresh start today. Some of you, tomorrow's Monday. You might need a fresh start Monday, right? So you go home Sunday, and you're like, you're all fired up, and you get home, it's tomorrow's Monday. So tomorrow's April Fool's Day, so don't, don't forget that. But uh, um, today, t- today, tomorrow, daily, through the week, but then continually, from start to finish, continually. Your whole life and journey with God is from start to finish by faith. So we're going to talk about that. So five powerful tools to give you a fresh start with God. The first one is the power of what I call the power of God's call on your life. Now, we're introduced the, to the Apostle Paul right from the very get-go, right from the start. Now, usually you and I get a letter and, uh, or an email or whatever, and, and, and it, it, we like sign it with our name at the end, Right? And so sometimes you have to look at that letter and go, who wrote this? And oh, it's them, delete. Okay, so and no, it's a, like, who is this? So, so we, we end it with, in the, in the New Testament, it starts with, this is who this is from. So Paul, it's interesting, he, he gives us three main things about him. And I, I just look at these like, like uh, they're almost like his mission statement or his, his calling wrapped up in, in what he says. He says, uh, uh, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle, and sent out to preach his good news. I just thought, you know, wow, here's the apostle Paul. He's saying this. He's saying, I'm a servant, apostle, and preacher of the gospel. Doesn't that sound good? Come on, I said, doesn't that sound good? Like, I'm a, I'm a servant, apostle, and preacher of the gospel. I feel like I need a t-shirt or something that says that on there. Like, it just like dials me in, like, this is what I am. This is, this is who we are. And I, th- I think of like a, a, a saying for the year or a goal for the year and like this mission statement or, or this calling. It's like, it's that. He was, he was dialed in. This is, this, is, this is my life. He's saying, I'm a servant, apostle, preacher of the gospel. Servant. Now, in Rome, there were over six million slaves. So he's writing this letter to an area that has over six million slaves within the Roman Empire. And uh, of course, most of them were forced into slavery, but a lot of them actually were in, in, in really key positions, um, respectful positions in businesses and in homes and, and for, uh, you know, important people, those kinds of things. But most of them were, you know, I'm a slave. That's my life. I'm a slave. And, and Paul says, me too. I'm a bond servant. That's what he's saying. I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ. So I, I, I want you to take that and, 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 and get the, the good news out of it. It's a bond servant for Jesus Christ. I am subservient to my master, Jesus Christ. I'm going to do whatever he asks me to do, and I'm going to, I'm going to follow his orders. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Apostle. Servant, apostle. Sent one. That's what that means. A sent one. It's not the most spiritual one, it's a sent one. So being sent out from the king, or you're an emissary for the king, so you're sent out on a mission. Now Paul had a mission. Paul had a mission. You know what his mission was? To kill Christianity. He was going to kill Christianity. He was going to take it down. He was going to destroy it. He was a religious leader to the hilt that was going to take this down. So he's out riding to kill Christianity. And he meets the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Did I say he's alive today, right? He was alive then too, okay? So he was alive, and he meets Paul. He goes face to face with Paul. He knocks him off his high horse and sets his life on a a different course. He's like, man, he puts him with a new mission, and now he goes out. He's like, I'm an apostle. I'm a servant apostle. I'm sent to share the good news. Preacher of the gospel, 60 times, at least 60 times in Romans, the word gospel or good news is used. And he says, I bring this good news. This is what he's saying. I'm a a preacher of the good news or the gospel. I'm bringing good news. Now, how many of you, you know, right now today, you you, you just want to hear some good news. You want to hear some good news, right? Like, just go on the internet. There's plenty of it. (laughs) Just turn on the TV. Just major channel, just go right in, just, I, I need some good news, right? And then you watch it, you know, no, I need some good news. I'm, I'm, I'm totally depressed now. 
I didn't know I needed to be afraid of all that, and I didn't know this was happening, and I didn't know, man, and it's terrible, it's horrible, we see everything. But I'm not talking about, well, I need, I need a piece of good news today. Like you walked in today and said, oh, you know, my life's kind of down, I, I need some good news. And I'm like, oh, hey, um, okay, let me give you some good news. No, I'm going to give you the good news. This is the good news. He's talking about the preacher of the good news, and it's life in Jesus Christ. It's that Jesus, according to 1 Corinthians 15, Paul wrote it this way, it's the good news that saves you. It doesn't just give you a a nicer attitude for a moment, but it's the good news that saves you. And Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. This is the good news. And and you wanna wanna take that on, that's for you. Like This is good news for you, for me, for all of us. So we get this good, and Paul's like, I'm a, I'm a servant, apostle, preacher of the gospel, the good news. And he reiterates this in verse 4. He says, he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. Now Paul saw this as a privilege with the authority from Jesus to go out and share this good news. And he says, he says it like this, though. He says, this is for you. Like, this is for you. And he, of course, he's writing this letter to these Roman people, and he's like, this is for you. But it, it translates right to us. This is for us. This is for you. Even the dude in the cowboy hat over here, this is for you. <laughs> this is for you. This is for you. It, it's for us, Right? And, and he's saying, this, this, is, this is for you. Like, this whole calling thing, God calling you out, it's, this is for you. Giving you a calling, this is for you. Some of you are wondering, what am I called to do? Start right here. Fresh start, start right here. God's calling in your life. Now, I was thinking about it this way. <clears throat> so Jesus, standing before the tomb of Lazarus, and he calls his name, right? Standing before the tomb of Lazarus, and he calls his name. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus was in there. He's like, nah. I don't feel like it today. No, here's what happened. When Jesus called his name, what did he do? He came out of that grave. We just sang about it, the glorious day. When, I, when he called my name, I came out of that grave. And so this calling on your life, it's about being a servant who shares the gospel with others. This is God's call in your life. This is the call in your life. Now, it's not going to be, you're not going to be like the, you're not going to be the Apostle Paul. You're just not. Neither am I. God didn't call me to be that, but he called me to be a servant sent out to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to get that calling, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab on to this second powerful tool and, and it goes on in the, the chapter here, is where it's the, what I call the powerful tool of personal prayer. And, and I love what Paul says here. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. I'm like, what? Like, just think, what do you think people are saying about your faith all over the world? What are they, what are they saying about Calvary? Now, you, here, here's what I know they're saying. Like, I know because I'm getting, I'm getting feedback from our, our missionaries and our missionary projects and the people that we've, we've given to to help them in their ministry, they're, 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 they're like writing, I, we, got a, we got a gift box with all, this, all these gifts in it this week from Vapor Ministry saying, thank you so much for what you, you guys are doing to help us um, bring the gospel to these different countries. Thank you. So, so they're, you know, they're, but... Don't you love it to, to hear what is, going, what is God doing all over the world? Paul was saying, I, I'm loving it. I, I haven't been there yet. I, I want to come and see you guys. But I haven't been there yet, but I hear about it. Now, he knew some of the people, like Aquila and Priscilla, that were there. He knew them. But he hadn't been to Rome, and he hadn't met that church. And he was like, man, I can't wait to see you guys. I, I want to I wanna, I wanna be there. But he, he was a man of prayer, so he was praying already for these people he had never met. He was praying for churches all over the place. 
that he had helped plant or they had planted. He was, man, he was praying for these. He was a prayer warrior. The other night we had, in here, we had a couple crosses and we had people come up and nail to the cross a prayer and a praise. And, man, we took those cards and had, I mean, everybody just wrote a prayer and nailed it to the cross. And we took those prayers and we put them all together and we're going to put them on Facebook this week. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. You're thinking, oh, I'm so glad I didn't show up. But, uh, <laughs> no, but just kind of, if, if you would have been here, you, you would have seen something. You would have seen two cross, two wooden crosses up here with a bunch of prayer and praises nailed to that. Some of the people were coming up to me after and said, that was so awesome to be able to do that, to experience that. And I, 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 I'll just be honest, I read some of those prayers. And you guys are jacked up, okay? So, uh, <laughs> but the good news, here's the good news. You're forgiven. Jesus is alive. What he did on the cross takes care of everything we nailed to that cross. And we are forgiven and moving on. And people are putting prayers and praise and thanking God for all kinds of things. But it, was, it, it helps you see, man, guess what? The person next to you, the person behind you, the person around you, we all need prayer, right? You need prayer? Raise your hand. If you need, you can say, man, I could, I could use some prayer. Yeah, so, so get involved in praying with people, like for people, in, included in this. Now, game changer. Here it is. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Could we stop right there? Does anybody worry about anything? You're worried about, yeah, you're worried about if you're going to get your kids getting eggs today. I mean, you know, you're, you're worried. There's all kinds of things to be worried about, right? It's like, oh, uh, you know. So um, it says, don't do that. That's my translation, okay? So uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, and, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And you say, wow, I need that. Guess what? I want you to think of different today. Yes, you do need that. But someone around you needs that. They need it too. So include your, in your personal prayer, kind of take that up a notch by extending that out to people around you. Make prayer a game changer, not only in your life, but in the lives of people around you. We have prayer, ways to get involved in prayer here. Uh, just, you know, take that prayer notch up, you know, uh, you know, take that prayer life up a notch. So the power of personal prayer. Then the third thing, this leads right into it, is the power of mutual encouragement. Now, how many of you would say, okay, I know you need prayer, but how many of you need encouragement? Need some encouragement? Just a few of you, really? How many of you are just not going to raise your hand today? Go ahead. Okay, all right. Paul says, I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. Man. I said, we, we could all use some encouragement all the time, right? I mean, daily. I, I, I say it this way, life sucks. <laughs> what, is it, what does that mean? Here's what I mean by that. Life sucks the energy right out of you. Life sucks, sucks the courage right out of you. It's discouragement. So many things this week that will bring discouragement and you want to be encouraged. And I, I'm going to give you one of God's secret weapons to bring encouragement to you. I know it's the scripture, but I'm going to give you another one. It's a person. It's a person. It's someone you know to bring encouragement. Now, I, I call um, a hug vitamin H. Right? Come on, turn to the person next to you. No, don't do that. So... Uh, <laughs> Vitamin H. Why? Because it's so good. We need a hug, right? You need a hug. You ever see someone and you just like, man, you just need a hug today. And you, can I give, no, don't give me a, yeah, you know, so, oh, okay. <laughs> but vitamin E 
is encouragement. We all need encouragement, and we need to be encouragers, and we give and we get it. It's mutual encouragement. So how can I make mutual encouragement a part of my daily routine or part of my daily regimen? Well, pray for someone. Ask God, hey, send me someone today that needs encouragement. And guess what, he will, guess what he'll do? Yes, just like that. <laughs> Immediate answer, okay? Pray for encouragement, okay? So send a text. I love it when you guys text me and say, Pastor Ken, I'm praying for you. I love both of you. Okay? Love it. Someone told me the other night, I got a complaint. And I said, go talk to uh, Chris, okay? So uh, text somebody a word of encouragement. It, it's, so, it's so cool that we could do that just like that. Encourage someone. A note, a call, a card, a letter, email. Meet up for encouragement. Pray and ask God. Who could you use me to bring encouragement to? Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're thinking, well, I, but I need encouragement. Who's, who's God going to send me? I'm going to say, unwrap your arms and say, God, send me to someone to encourage them. And you and I probably, you get it, I get it. When you go to encourage someone, you get encouraged. When you go visit someone, you feel encouraged. When you give encouragement, you get that. Mutual encouragement. Now, about what, though? It's not just, hey, I hope you have a good day. But Paul was like, I want to I wanna encourage you in your faith. I want to be with you and bring some spiritual gift. Not, hey, I'm so spiritual, I'm going to bring you a gift. I'm gonna, I want to encourage you in your faith. And I want to see fruit in your life. See, the Apostle Paul wasn't really just like this, oh, let's hang out and have a cup of coffee and just sit and, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of encourage one another. It was like, hey, let's talk about faith. Let's talk about your faith. Let's talk about my faith. Let's grow together. And let's, let's see, where's God? Where's the fruit of the Spirit? Where's the fruit of God in your life right now? Where, where are we seeing that? See, this takes it up to a whole other level. It's mutual encouragement. Like, we're not just getting together, but we're like, we're, um, and, and I, I know, I'm, I'm going to say holding each other accountable, and you're like, I don't want to be held accountable. Okay, so just be an encourager, right? But like, how, how is our faith growing, and where are we seeing the fruit of the, the life of Christ in us? Looking for that element, which leads to the fourth powerful tool. It's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, a fresh start. You're, you're, you're praying, and you're mutually, but you're going to be, begin to see the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's the power of God at work. The power of God at work. I already told you, Paul was like on a mission to destroy Christianity. And that, that powerful Paul was knocked down by the one that has no rival, no equal, and said, you're not powerful at all. Now, I'm going to change your life, and you're going to now be my, you're going to go out and preach for me. So you were, you were trying to break up and break apart Christianity. Now I'm going to use you as a mouthpiece to go out and spread the good news. And so he totally changed him, and he becomes this, this, this preacher of the good news. And it says, this is the power of God. It's the power of God at work. It's the power of God at work. What is? The gospel. The good news, like you sharing the gospel, that's the power of God at work. You don't have to be very powerful. Why? Because you got the power, right? You got the power. It's right there in the good news, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it saves everyone who believes. Even you. Even you who think, I'm... I'm I'm too far gone. Or even you who are thinking, I don't need that. It's for you. It's for me. Everyone who believes. You see, the word salvation is a term that actually means deliverance or rescue. And we all need that from sin, the penalty of sin, and from death. 
Acts 4.12, there's salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. The good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. It is completely and only through Jesus Christ. You want to get right? You want to get it right? You want to live right? You want to, you want to be right? How many of you are like, man, I, I just like to be right. I just like to be right. I'm just, you know, be careful how you raise your hand on this one, okay? I just, I, I'm usually right. I mean, I'm, I'm, most of the time I'm right. And a lot of times I'm telling people, you want to be right or married? Okay, so, uh, you know, <laughs> like, there's more important things than for you to be right all the time. But Romans talks about how to be right with God, how to be right with me, and how to be right with you. God, myself, and others. That's Romans, wrapped up in that. So it leads us to that last powerful tool. Number five, the power of faith from start to finish. This is accomplished. This is accomplished. This powerful, life-changing life in Christ is accomplished from start to finish by what? By what? Say it again. Say it. Faith. I want, yeah, you got to know this. It's by faith. It's not by what you feel. It's not by what you see. It's not by fear. It's not by anything else. It's by faith. Start to finish. We're going to go from start to finish by faith. Now, we're going to go through the, the book of Romans from start to finish, but today, it's a new day, a day for a new start. So here's what I want you to do. I want you If you've never started a life with Jesus Christ, if you've never personally invited Jesus Christ to come into your life and understood the gospel, this good news that brings you up out of the grave from the walking dead into the made alive in Christ, you haven't done that. I want you to do that today. Of course I want you to do that today. But I want you to hear God's call on your life and you step out and say, I want to do that today. So I'm going to have the band come up, and we're going to do a song called Living Hope. We're going to kind of close this section out with Living Hope. And um, I want, if you're going to get baptized, we're going to have a couple baptisms. So if you're going to get baptized, go back to the changing room right now. And what I want you to do, as the band's coming up here, I want you to stand up with me. I want you to stand up. And maybe today, when I think of fresh start, you're thinking about, man, my marriage needs a fresh start. My life needs a fresh start. Man, I really blew it this last week or this last month or this year, whatever. I've really blown it. I need a fresh start. I need a restart. How about if you just come up today and publicly say, just by walking up here and say, God, you know what's going on in here and in here and I want a fresh start today. So here's what I want you to do. If you're on our prayer team, I'm going to come up here. If you're not on the prayer team, but you want prayer, and you're saying, Pastor Ken, I want to come up, and I'm saying it. I I need a new start today. I want you to come up. Just right now, right now. Come on up. Come on up. You need a new start. Come on up. Come on up. Come on right up the front. Let's go. Come on. You need a new start. And that's, I want to start a new life with Christ, or that's, I, I want to, I want to restart because I'm kind of drifted away. I want, a, I want a new start. Come on. Come on up forward. Come on. Come on. Now's the time. Come on. Come on up. New start. New start. I'm going to pray. And if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, and that's your start today, I want you to pray like this. And, and we're going to pray together, okay? Lord Jesus, Just take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Forgive me for my sin. Change my heart for you. You are my Lord and my Savior, and I commit my life to you today. In Jesus' name.
Amen. How many of you prayed that prayer right now? How many of you prayed that prayer for the first time? You just prayed that prayer? You're like, this is, this is, I just, I just gave my life to Jesus Christ. Anybody? Pray that prayer, because I want you to come up here. If you pray that prayer, come on up. Don't be ashamed. We're not ashamed of the gospel. It's like, man, I'm, I'm praying that today. I'm praying that today. Come on up. I would love to, I would love to, I'd love to meet you. Come on up. Awesome. 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 You're coming up and you're saying, I, I want to accept Christ as my Savior. I, I, I just prayed that prayer. Awesome. Because we're going to sing this song called Living Hope. And we're going to sing it with a new energy because it's true. God, I, I pray that this morning, as we just give our hearts to you, our lives to you, God, that you would be honored and glorified. Thank you, Jesus for being our living hope. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So listen, during this song, during the song, if you want to come up for prayer, come on up. If you have prayed and you're like, man, I just want to glorify God in this, uh, just stay up, go back to your seat. What, I mean, just let's pray, okay? Let's pray and sing and uh, give glory to God. So let's, let's sing this out.
a seat. We've got a couple of baptisms today. This is a, what a great picture of death, burial, resurrection in the lives of, of these who are being baptized today. Hi, everybody. I am Pastor Murdoch. We are here. We're here on this uh, Resurrection Sunday, and we get to have baptisms, which is awesome, because baptism is showing us being buried with him in his likeness and being raised to a new life. So just as we're celebrating Jesus' resurrection, baptism is celebrating a new life of a couple guys that we have here. So I've gotten to know you. Uh, I'll, I'll say your name. You're Danny. Yes, Over the past uh, couple months in Belong, but I'm not sure if nobody else here at uh, Calvary has gotten to know you yet. How'd you come to uh, Calvary, uh, and when, when did you place your faith in Jesus? Um, I placed my faith in Jesus at a, at a very young age, I would say, but um, I think throughout my adult life, I sort of uh, stepped away from it for a few years. Um, it was in, until, I think, November of 2022 that I finally decided to step into the building that I had passed by, driven by for like the last 10 years or so, and uh, it was uh, one of the best decisions I ever made, I'd say. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So what's really cool is just like right now, we can't see anybody over there, but we know that there's a celebration. There is a, there is a spiritual realm that we can't see, and you making this decision right now, there's a celebration going on there as well. So uh, let's get in if you stand here. And Danny, my brother, uh, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I'm going to baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Walk in the means of life. Alright, my friend. Have you come down? Alright, everyone. Introduce yourself. Uh, Matthew. This my is Matthew. Is Matthew. <laughs> and Matthew, I like that uh, I got to know you first when you started coming. We were over in the family center. Yeah. And one of my first interactions with you was you came forward for prayer. Yeah. And I like that our friendship just got built off of prayer. Yeah. And since then, uh, we've gotten to know each other pretty, pretty well in our conversations. Yeah. Yeah, so for I'm sure. for that. But uh, to let everybody else in, you know, how did you come to Calvary and when did you place your faith in Christ? Uh, I came here about a year ago. Um, and it was about a year ago that I put my faith into Christ. Um, I, I, I spent my adult life really not, not giving my life to him, but it was about a year ago now that I've committed. Awesome. I've committed to him, so. Praise God. Yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna have you stand with you. My brother Matthew, because of your profession in Christ, I'm gonna baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. I can do it. Whoa, that's fun, huh? I, I, like, I like baptizing the big guys. The big guys always say to me, are you going to be able to take me up out of the water? And I'm like, I'll put you under. You'll come up. Okay, so uh, anyway, here's, here's some instructions. So uh, we're going get, to get ready to go over and it's... I don't know if it's raining outside or not, but we're still having an Easter egg hunt. And uh, so here's what we're going to do. Um, for those of you that uh, filled out a guest card, you can take that. When you go into the family center, you can uh, drop that off at the welcome table right there when you first come in. So don't go out to the gazebo. We're inside today. So come in there. And then right next to that, the women's ministry, that's where they're, um, they have the tickets for the uh, uh, silent auction. And uh, they have also tickets for Patricia McIntosh's party that we're going to have in a couple of weeks. So you want to get that. And then um, there's pictures with the Easter Bunny in the room right there. And so you can go in and get pictures with the Easter Bunny. I had someone say, what's the Easter Bunny have to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ? I said, our Easter Bunny's saved. So, uh, you know, we're, we're good. And he brings me Reese's uh, Easter eggs. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So anyway, pictures in there. Let's have some fun with it. And then the, the, the gym is split into two sections, the, the smaller kids and the, the bigger kids. Okay. So as you go in, you'll see, you'll be directed, but make sure 
and uh, get, make sure you get your kids from children's ministry and head over there, and we'll see you in there. God bless you guys. Can we stand? Can we stand? Yep, and we're ready to go, so get your kids. Get over to the Family Center. Let's have a great time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, Josh, one, one other thing. I Easter lilies. The Easter lilies are the resurrection plant. So if you want to come up as a family, one per family, and take one or deliver one to someone.